So what I like to do is I like to put my spring stuff on top and then I like to go down as I think of it, the days that I wanna start them in seed trays and the days I want to put them out in the field. So like I've got bunching onions, head lettuce, salanova, kale, carrots, and spring mix. Those are all the items that are gonna go that I would like to bring to market April 1st. So I know like with my bunching onions, uh, I needed to seed those by today. Same way with the head lettuce, salanova, uh, carrots need to go in today to a bed. And you may think, wow, that's awful early. But you know, I'm growing in a couple high tunnels. So the high tunnels are gonna help me out extend my season or kickstart my season early. Uh, last year we did tomatoes. I had tomatoes in the ground by March 1st. We had tomatoes to market by the end of May. We were one of the only farms that had locally grown tomatoes. Actually, we were the only farm that had locally grown tomatoes by the end of May. Most people don't get tomatoes till July 4th. So <clears throat> at least around here anyway. Uh, so that's the thing too. We were selling a lot of tomatoes because people were wanting tomatoes. They were wanting local grown tomatoes and we were providing that service. So that's something to keep also in your mind. Um, so, and then I like to put my next succession, like bunching onions, for instance, I started today, January 1st. I'll start another round of them on August 1st. Um, you can grow them throughout the summer, but I find that our summer months, we grow a lot of tomatoes and okra, squash, zucchini, green beans, peppers, uh, stuff like that. More people are into the summertime stuff than they are into the spring and fall kind of things. Now, I'm sure if I had green onions on the market all summer, I'm sure we could sell them. But I have found that the beginning of the year and the end of the year is when people are wanting those kind of items. Head lettuce and salanova is the same way. You know, our head lettuce we grow um, is more of a heat tolerant head lettuce and then salanova, of course. And we'll get into all those things when we start seeding. Kale, you know, is going, you can grow that into the summer also. I never have here because the bug pressure is really high. So I like to grow it going into winter and then going into spring. Carrots, you can pretty much grow all year round if you get the right type of carrot. We only grow one type of carrot here, and we'll explain all of that as we get ready to start season, the reasons why I only grow one type. Uh, spring mix could be like an Asian's green mix, a baby leaf lettuce mix, tot soy mix, arugula, arugula mizuna, um, red mustard, purple mustard, you know, anything like that. I usually put that, try to get that in by the middle of February, so that way it gives it a good 30, 45 days. So when our, I like to, have everything ready to go the first week of April. So um, in order for me to do that, I have to think about my succession plannings and when I want to get started. Now, same way with the tunnel tomatoes, squash, zucchini, ochre, green beans, and peppers. Of course, they're more of a warm weather. Even with the high tunnel, I think there's a misconception that people think if you have a high tunnel, you can grow tomatoes all year long. Yes and no. You could if you could keep it warm enough and had enough daylight. Uh, people seem to think that just because it gets cold, things don't grow. Summer items don't grow. And, and that is true to a point. You know, if tomatoes or peppers take a frost, they'll die. But inside of a high tunnel, if you can keep the temperature inside of a high tunnel at 65 to 80 degrees, and you could have at least 12 to 14 hours of sunlight, your tomatoes will grow all winter. So it can be done. Um, yes, you do have to pay for supplemental heat, supplemental lighting, items like that. It's a very big market. If you could grow all year long, uh, especially here in the Midwest, people will buy your product. You could always find somebody or a restaurant to buy your product in the middle of winter. So of course, you know, I like to start my tomatoes in the middle of February so I can get them in the ground by April 1st. Uh, you really want to try to do stuff like that four to eight weeks before your last frost date. Our last frost date is towards the end of April, 1st of May, somewhere in that range. I like to be a little safe, so I always say May 1st. So that, that's how I kind of judge. And I know they're gonna go into the high tunnel in April 1st, so I'll be able to put a small agribond or a frost blanket on top of that if it gets cool at night to keep those things going. Uh, same thing with my beds. I like to do my variety. So I have Salanova. I know I'm gonna plant four heads across. Head lettuce is three heads across. I'm gonna do 10 rows of carrots per bed and then 18 inch apart from my tomatoes. So if you look at this, I've got 50 foot beds, 60 foot beds, and 100 foot beds. Uh, my DIY high tunnel that I built first, I built that on a 60 foot bed, should have been a 50, but that was my mistake. We'll talk about that kind of stuff later. So I've got 60 foot beds, 50 foot beds going into my new tunnel. And then if I wanted to do a 100 foot bed. So like with Salanova, 
I know I'm gonna plant four ahead or four across on that row and I'm gonna plant them 12 inches apart. Now, that may change. I may suck those into eight or 10 inches apart. I always try to do everything on 12 inches apart because my drip line, uh, my drip irrigation has an emitter every 12 inches. So that gives me a little bit more space. I can afford to have a little more space um, to get airflow around those products to keep the mold down and keep the pest pressure down. So I know with Salanova, I do four across. In a 50-foot bed, I could get 200 heads of Salanova. 60-foot bed, I could do 240. And if I did a 100-foot bed of those, I could get 400 heads of lettuce in there. Same way with the head lettuce, I do three across because I grow three bigger varieties that tend to like to get big. I can grow a 10 to 12 to 14, 16 ounce head of lettuce sometimes. So I grow those three across so that way they're not really, so I can get those to be a bigger product. Um, I could do 150 in a 50, 180 in a 60, and 300 in a 100 foot bed. Same way with carrots. Um, we do 10 rows of carrots in a bed. So I can do 3,000 carrots in a 50 foot bed, 3,610 in a 60 foot bed, and 6,000 carrots in a 100 foot bed. And you may say, why? I don't know why that's very important. It's very important because now I can look at my succession planning on my head lettuce and my Salanova. And I know going in, if I'm going to do two beds of Salanova, I know that's 400 head. So same way with this, I'm only two beds of that, that's 300 head. So now I'm looking at 750 heads of lettuce that's gonna come out almost the exact same time or pretty close to that. So I can adjust my succession plantings. These dates are not definitive. I can change these today, tomorrow, next day, it doesn't matter. Um, this is just me setting a goal in my head. And you always wanna set a goal or think forward to get you where you need to be now. Like I said, this I have it on February 14th for the second planting of Salanova. That may be March 1st. That may be February 1st. I don't know yet. Um, we can't predict, you know, with accuracy 60 days to the T of what my weather's gonna be. Now I've looked at my weather and it looks like we're gonna have 30 to 40 to 50 degree weather going forward in uh, February, March, and April. It looks like we're gonna have a very mild winter here, but you know what, this is Kansas, it could change. Like I said, today is almost 60 and tomorrow's gonna be negative 30 wind chill. So that's how much this is gonna fluctuate and no amount of tunnel is going to change that for you or assist you with that. So. I like to keep in mind, that way I know going in, if I wanted to do two rows of Salanova, I know I need to start 400 starts. Uh, same way like this with the carrots, I know if I want to do a 50 foot bed, I could get 3,000 carrots out of that. And when we sell our carrots, we sell them 10 to a bunch. So I know I can get 300 bunches of carrots out of that. So that kind of gives you a mindset of what you sell your carrots for um, and, and what you're going to make per bed, per price of seed and fertilizer and water and everything. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys out. Please don't think this is the general rule or this is the definitive Bible that you guys need to follow for your farm. You know, like I always say, you guys need to do what's good for your farm and your area. And this may not be good for you guys. It may be good for you guys. I don't know. But you're more than welcome to steal this idea and, um, and, and kind of set a plan for yourself. Even if you're a backyard gardener, you have a small raised bed, you could do the same thing. That way you know how many broccoli starts to start or how much corn to start or anything like that. All it is is math. A back of the seed uh, packet or for instance, I use Johnny seeds and um, like I said, I'm not affiliated with Johnny or anything. I have to buy my seeds like everybody else does. But I like to affiliate myself with good companies that have good products time after time after time. And Johnny's is great for me. Uh, Johnny's is great for a lot of market gardeners. They use Johnny's. But their catalog is almost like a textbook. They will even go down to how big the carrots get to when your germination soil temperature should be, what roller on your Jang cedar you need to use for pelleted carrots or raw seeds. That helps out a lot. My seed choices. You know, the first year going into this, I think a lot of new gardeners or a lot of new market gardeners, I, me included, um, was buying every tomato variety known to man. I wanted to have a table that had 10 different varieties of tomatoes, heirloom and hybrids. I wanted to have five different types of cucumbers. I wanted to have plentiful buckets of squash and zucchinis of different colors and sizes and stuff. That's great. Um, what I found out, most of it didn't sell. And the reasoning behind that is, is people want a lot of variety. You want to grow everything. But to be honest, 
most customers only want to buy certain items or certain kind of tomatoes, certain slicer of tomatoes, certain types of cucumbers. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying to steer you away from buying heirlooms or buying anything like that. Heirlooms don't work in my model. And the reason why heirloom tomatoes don't work is because you don't get as much yield from an heirloom tomato and it takes a lot longer to get that yield. Now, I know, let me back up there. There's gonna be a lot of people hating on this because I said that. Um, I only grow determinate type tomatoes here on the farm. The reason why I grow determinate type tomatoes is because they're not growing out of control. They're usually three to five feet off the ground. I can control that base. I grow a high tunnel style from Johnny's that puts on a lot of fruit quick. So I'm in the business to sell my product. I'm not in the business for Instagram pictures. I'm not in the business uh, to impress anyone. I'm in the business to sell produce and make money. If you cannot sell your produce at market and make money doing your produce, you're not going to be doing this very long. It's either going to be a failed business or it's going to be a controlled hobby. I want my business to succeed, so I have narrowed down uh, I think down to 10 different varieties of stuff that we're growing. I'm only growing one type of slice or tomato. I'm only growing one type of, or I'm sorry, two types of cherry tomatoes. We're only growing one type of cucumber, one type of pickles, one type of okra, one type of um, zucchini, one type of squash. You kind of get the gist in this. Um, the reason why is because you can have an abundance on your table, but most people are going to stick to the bread and butter, what they know. They want this they want a straighter crook neck squash. Um, I grew uh, like the little round squashes and patty pans. I couldn't even sell those. Um, we wasted a lot of money in seeds because people would not even buy that. They, did, they, they didn't know what to do with it. Even though it's a squash and you can tell them, you can cut it up and cook it, roast it. You can do whatever, just like a regular squash. People stayed away from that because they were used to one type of squash. They were used to the green zucchini. They didn't want to try the white ones or they didn't want to try anything else because it was unfamiliar. It was alien to them. Uh, same way with tomatoes. You know, we had a lot of people tell us, hey, if you grow uh, a lot of these tomatoes, we'll buy all you have. Well, I grew tomatoes and we did have a couple people buy from us, but mostly we didn't. A lot of those uh, we ate for ourselves or we had to give away because we couldn't get rid of them. So we narrowed it down to one type, one type of tomato and what that's gonna do is that's gonna be cost effective for us and cost effective going in for labor. I'm gonna know exactly when this thing needs planted, when it's gonna germinate, when to get it out in the field, how to stake it, how to prune it, how to sell it.